This is Mark Galley. I'm with Think Reliability, and we specialize in root cause analysis and incident investigation. I'm going to cover some five whys training. I'm going to use the conventional explanation of five whys. Then I want you to kind of rethink how five whys is used within your company. There's some people that like five whys and some people that hate five whys. And we're going to cover what really what the benefits are and, and some of the confusion about the approach. So the example I've got is from the Wikipedia website. There is a if you search five whys and go to Wikipedia, there's a lot of information about five whys. The rules of five whys are in there. And then there's an example of alternator uh, belt is broken, which results in a vehicle not starting. So the problem is identified in this five why example of the vehicle won't start. And the question is, why is that? And the answer is because the battery is dead. And why is the battery dead? Because the alternator is not working. It's not charging the battery. And that's because the belt is broken. And the belt is broken because it's well beyond its useful life and not replaced. So they put an and relationship in the answer while building a 5Y. Not, not a good idea because these are separate cause and effect relationships. We'll cover that in a little while. And the fifth why question is, why is the belt beyond its useful life? And the answer is because it was not maintained according to recommended service schedule. And that is identified as the root cause. Now, it is a good idea to understand the recommended service schedule, but there isn't a root cause that you arrive at by asking five why questions. I know that's the conventional explanation. It's just there is nothing special about the fifth why other than it comes after the fourth why and before the sixth why. But that's it. So five whys is just a phase of an investigation. It is not the end point of an investigation. I know that's not what conventional five why says, but you're, you're restricting or limiting your explanation of an issue if you think it's only five whys. The rules are, you know, five whys is typically built with sentences down the page, and then the fifth why question is the root cause. And there is, there's much more to an issue than that. It's actually simpler than having to use these these just these five why questions so we lay out cause and effect visually when we build a cause map we'll show you how cause and effect lays out visually it starts with one two three whys and expands uh, it makes it much easier to add as much detail as you want so you start simple and then you add detail to whatever level is needed to thoroughly explain the issue so here's what the five why looks like uh, this is built in Microsoft Excel using our cause mapping template. You can download that from our website, but this is saying this is an effect. Vehicle will not start and it's caused by the battery is dead. And then you ask another why, which is another cause and effect relationship and another cause and effect relationship. And I'm just going to circle each one of these because I want you to see these are those same five why questions, but this is why an incident is called a chain of events because each cause and effect relationship connects together. That's where the term came from. So some people don't even like cause and effect, but cause and effect is fundamental to explaining why things happen. So this uh, five why that's pretty straightforward, it's got an answer, you remember, that has an and relationship in it. So it says that the belt was not replaced and the belt is not replaced because it was not maintained according to the service schedule. It also says in here that the belt was worn out. Why was the belt worn out is a good question. This is an answer to why the belt was not replaced, but the question of why the belt is worn out hasn't been answered. You can break those out into separate cause and effect relationships. The belt is, is broken because it's, it says the answer was belt well beyond useful life. Really the clear way to write that is the belt is worn or the belt's worn out. But the next question right here is why is the belt worn out? You can go down that causal path. Why was the belt not replaced? That's the service schedule. So really there are different causal paths. This is why when you ask different people to build a 5Y, you get different answers. It's very normal. They don't see it the same way. The wording I'm gonna go ahead and change to belt worn out instead of well beyond its useful life. And you can determine how worn out it is. But this then goes to a, a 6Y. So now it points out these two causal paths connect together to where the alternator belt is broken because it's worn out. And the next question here is, why is it worn out? And the alternator belt is broken because we didn't replace it. What this says is, if it didn't wear out like this, then it wouldn't be broken, which is obvious. It also says, even if it wears out, if we replaced it earlier, we could prevent the belt from breaking and losing the alternator. The point is there are solutions down each one of these paths. 
the reason you dig into an issue or you, you conduct an analysis to understand what are your options in terms of solutions. Now, in our cause mapping method, we cover thoroughly in our training why you should tie issues to the overall goal. So this doesn't start with just the vehicle won't start. It has to point out why is that a big deal. So there's some impact to transportation because we can't reach our destination because the vehicle won't start. That's how the cause map uh, begins. So this, this 8Y, if we zoom out a little bit, we find out the vehicle was not maintained according to its service schedule because we don't know. We're unaware of the service schedule. We have a question mark. We need to run that down and, and get evidence. It was also a question of why is the belt worn? And it says, well, is this, is this normal wear? This requires some investigation. That's why it's a question mark. It says, well, is the belt, was it defective when it was put in? Was there an issue with the installation? Was the tension too too much or was the tension not enough or was there an alignment issue that you don't know why the belt is worn out but any mechanic that troubleshoots an issue would find out what happened in this particular case that's what the evidence is for this is the replacement cycle here it's not just the maintenance schedule it's also the fact of did we ever check the belt at any point meaning they might tell you what frequency you should replace the belt but this also means that we haven't even looked at or inspected the belt to know that it needs to be replaced. The point is, this is now a 13Y. That 5Y is a fine place to start. It is fine to lay out a 5Y, but the benefit of laying out the 13Y is you get additional solution options. And one of the causal paths on this is you're unable to arrive at your destination because the vehicle you're driving, which I guess is your primary vehicle, uh, will not start and you have no backup plan, meaning it's not that you don't just necessarily have another vehicle, it's that you don't have anyone to drive you, you didn't take Uber. If this was critical, and this is what companies want to understand, if this is really a big issue that this needed to happen, what could we have done to mitigate that risk? So while this is a simple vehicle issue, you see the advantage of breaking an incident out into 14 causes, which by the way, is significantly fewer words than those original five sentences. So by not writing sentences and laying this out in a cause map with these boxes, it makes it much easier to start and then continue to expand this analysis. Not only did the belt break result in us not being able to drive the car, but it also caused the replacement of this belt. The serpentine belt has some cost to it and there's some impact to the property goal because we have to replace components. And then there's an impact to this transportation goal because we didn't get to our destination. So two different goals are affected on this one analysis. It points out there are solutions we can put in place that help mitigate risk. You notice that this solution over here that says let's have a backup plan doesn't change the fact that you have cost to replace the belt. So by understanding how the cause and effect relationships tie to particular goals, it gives you opportunities to mitigate risk. It just gives you a much more thorough understanding of the issue than just a 5Y. A 5Y actually distorts the issue because it doesn't give you that complete understanding. So we show the, the traditional or the conventional approach to 5Ys with sentences, and then we have the 5Ys built as a 5Y cause map, and then we also show the 10Y cause map here on this PDF, and then a 15Y. And you can download this PDF. The link to it is in the description of this video. All of this was built using our cause mapping template in Microsoft Excel. So you can show incidents at a basic level or a more detailed level inside the same investigation. That's how I'm able to jump to this 5Y and then show you the 9Y and then come back up here and look at the PDF. Excel makes it very easy to organize that, uh, that information. Now, if you'd like to learn more, about this approach, or if you've got a specific problem you'd like us to look at, or you understand how to develop a program for your department or your group, don't hesitate to contact us. We have case studies on our website. Uh, we do regular webinars each week that are free on a variety of topics. If you'd like to learn more about analyzing, documenting, communicating, and solving your problems effectively, you can attend one of our public workshops or have training at your site. Um, you can subscribe to this video if you'd like to see more of these. Uh, hopefully you found something uh, beneficial in here, but I encourage you to go out and test this approach within your job. You, you want to find out what works in the field, so experiment and get your own evidence. So thank you for taking time to watch this and let us know how we can help.